was going to do a video on this, but I figured it doesn't hurt to have another shed build video. This site right here is going to be a 10 by 12 shed. It's just a simple structure. Um, you can see it's going to be on pier foundation, only because that's what our inspection, our local ordinance requires. Either that or slab, which is annoying. Um, I think it's a little overkill for 10 by 12, but it is what it is. The other thing is because we're up so far up north, those piers have to be 42 inches deep into the ground. And um, so I didn't show the process, but we're, we're in the process, obviously, of, of filling them right now. So here's one that hasn't been filled. It's 42 inches down. Now what I did, I don't know if you can see, is inside the tube is split. And uh, I had just super difficulty, first of all, to, to do the holes there. What we did, and I kind of screwed up because I, I want to show you my screw up so you, you don't mess up. Um, th this is my line. So I took two rebar stakes and marked out outside of the area of the, uh, you know, of, of the structure where it's going to go. And you see I did that on all four corners. There's two pieces of rebar just pounded into the ground. Then I leveled it. So this, where this crosses, it should be where the shed comes to a corner. As you can see, I kind of messed up. This should be over offset into here, this way. So really, you know, the uh, the roundness, it should be right here. Um, so that's a little messed up, but you know, it's still okay. I still have enough room right there to put my anchor in. So once you get your string lines in, make sure you cut your holes and don't make the mistake I did. Make sure you cut your holes more inside of it, the inside corner of it. Um, the other thing is, uh, we rented a auger, one of those two-man uh, augers from the rental place, and we used that to get most of the hole dug with an eight-inch auger bit. But uh, that proved to be difficult toward the bottom. There was when we ran into rocks and clay, the auger was sticking. So what I did was, I modified a garden claw. I've seen these probably in the garden section here call it garden claw and what it is is just a, a handle with a little claw end and the way I modified it is I unbolted the the uh, two foot it's like a 24 inch bar blue bar that w went into it and I found a piece of uh, I think this is just half inch gas pipe in my basement just a steel uh, gas pipe and I drilled holes in it and I made the thing longer so then I could get down deep with that and finish out the holes and use a post hole digger to pull the material out and uh, that seemed to work good. I want to see my other holes here. I think I did a little better on this side, still not right. So I have a little little more area in there, but it's still, it should be moved in inward. Thank you. 
Okay, day two. No, it doesn't look like it, but I cleaned up the site a little bit. I just kind of raked the dirt uh, around those piers. And uh, what you can see there, though, is on the ground cover is uh, a, one of the extra bags of concrete kind of exploded on us. So I just sort of raked it around. I'll just leave that there, maybe spray some water on it. Um, so today we're going to be putting in the post anchors. And see, they're galvanized um, post anchor, 4x4 four four post anchors. But we're not actually using 4x4 four four posts. What we're using is treated double 2x8s. And those are going to run across the three piers on either side. So 10 foot 2x8s doubled up on each of those sides. So we'll go ahead and, and, uh, and get these things uh, bolted down and we'll uh, then we'll we'll put in our, our bracing. One thing to note is um, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last segment, but uh, obviously I, I, I mentioned that uh, my spacing was not right, you know, um, but it, it'll work. I, you know it'll work. it just won't look as good. Um, so I mentioned that so don't you know make sure you do yours right if you're following my videos. Again, I'm not uh, I'm not a builder. Yeah, uh, you know, this isn't my forte, so. But um, the other thing is, is the inspection, the permit inspection part. So our municipal codes, obviously I, I mentioned before that they state that you have to, your shed has to be on, either on a slab or on these piers, which have to be eight inch uh, by 42 inches deep to get below the frost line. And there's three inspections total for this whole shed process. The first one I've actually already passed, and they didn't even mention how badly I spaced my piers, so uh, that, I guess that's fine. Um, they probably just mainly focused on the depth. So, uh, but the first inspection is, was already passed, and that was the what you just saw uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, from, from the previous clip was uh, the, the pre-inspection before you you pour the the concrete. So they inspect. Um, they 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 want you to run your uh, string lines like I had it, and they want your piers to be uh, dug out, and then they just come by and inspect to make sure uh, that you your string lines are level and that your piers are deep enough. They didn't mention how badly mine were spaced, but again, I guess you know it it still works. Um, so uh, the next inspection will be right, that's why I'm trying to get this done this weekend, will be just the, the framing of the foundation. So once we frame this up, before we put the sheeting on top of it to make the actual subfloor of the shed, we have to get the framing inspected. And I think what they say is it has to be able to carry a load of, um, I think it was 50 pounds per foot, I believe what it, what it was. So what I'm going to be doing is, like I said, double two by eights, running the 10 foot width here and then joist hangers and two by eights running the 12 foot section all across here 16 inches on center and that should result in uh, a, a solid enough uh, foundation for them to pass the inspection but of course I'll let you know so part one this video here is is going to end at that inspect that second inspection on the foundation then I'll do a couple more parts, I don't know yet, on actual framing and building of the, uh, of the shed. But the final permit, there's only three, the final third permit is on, it doesn't have to be done until the entire shed is done, including the walls, the framing, the doors, window, trusses, and roof, and everything. So they put two inspections just on the foundation, so they emphasize they want the foundation to be solid, and then just a third inspection on the finished structure. So let's get started on the uh, framing and let's get this thing done. Okay, for further cautionary tales here. So my 4x4 post base 
is made for a four by four, obviously, which is three and a half inches. But when you put two two inch um, dimensional lumber into it, you're going to be a half inch. You're going to have a half inch gap. Okay, that's not a big deal. I've got a pressure treated four by four. I can cut some shims out of that. But I mean, this is again the cautionary tale of make sure you get your piers set right. These are way too wide. Um, but I'm going to make it work. Again, they passed my first inspection, so it's kind of their fault, um, my uh, city. But what I'm going to do here is, so I've just got these set in. Nothing's tightened down yet. They're just set in. Uh, I've, got to, I've got to cut these 2x10s the exact size, so the, you know, probably a quarter inch off some of them. And then I've got this 2x12 laying here just right onto the concrete just to get a level. And hey, the good news is, Everything's pretty level. I mean, very little shimming. I've got some composite shims, but very little shimming won't be needed. But look at how, I mean, look at how far off I am. But it's ledged, right? It's sitting on the uh, bracket. It's just not fully on the bracket. But once everything's tied together, it's a solid, you know, frame. But uh, here's the other thing, is because I'm so wide, <laughs> And I should have, I mean, I could have, should have moved those in like a, almost a foot, right? To get to, so that the lumber went, really the pier should have gone in a foot so the lumber went over it. But anyway, I can deal with that I'm using these joist hangers, right? For all the, all the uh, joists that are going to run, the 12 foot joists that are going to run across here. What I think I do, on, I'll, I'll do on the end is rather than even shimming it, I'll bend this down and then I'm just gonna put my joist hanger for my widest you know my out my widest um, beam on either side just right here and again this isn't as necessary because this thing right here obviously that'll tie it to the other side pretty well and again as long as everything's over the, the pier we should be fine, but you know, again, we'll see. See what the inspector says, but that's the plan: is to just to bend all those in, and uh, and then then it just all, on all the corners, the middle ones. Instead of bending in, I'll just shim with a piece of four by four by uh, uh, by half inch uh, shim that I make, and I'll just shim those. So what I'm going to do now is just finish, uh, you know, kind of fitting and cutting. I'll I'll tighten everything in because nothing's tightened down I just kind of put those in there and just lightly screwed them in so I mean now that I got a game plan I guess I'll tighten everything down and then start uh, getting these these uh, trimmed and set Measured everything end to end, so measured 12 foot, 12 foot, 12 foot from end to end, and tapped in each, you know, uh, each of the post uh, bases to where it needed to be, and then I marked it with a sharpie on the concrete because obviously it's <laughs> not great. So this one had to move over. Um, by the way, I, I, I measured diagonally as well to square everything. So everything's measured diagonally and end to end. Um, so this one had to move over. So what I did was I marked on the concrete where the post plate needs to be, just in case I, sh I sh it shifts around when I go to final bolt it in. And then I put a little mark with a sharpie on where the board is going to be is going to end up. I did that on all the posts and over there as well. So everything's squared up. It's just, um, it just doesn't look great, but. Yeah, maybe I can do some cosmetic stuff after all said and done. But everything's ledged on piers. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and set those and nail them all together. All right, before I get too far in, I'm going to film the progress. So we got these. I just 
screwed these with deck screws together. I'll uh, put some, probably put some lag bolts in them when I go get some. I set the uh, first board in. I had to shim a little bit there, but um, again, each time I measured from here to here, 12 foot, 12 foot, 12 foot, and then from the corner to corner, I think it was like 187 and a half, corner to corner, 187 and a half, so that's completely squared. Um, I can also, I guess, I haven't tried this yet, but I can also put my square in to see, and that looks pretty darn good. So we're, the good thing about it, as much as I've I've been moaning about how bad my uh, out exterior pier holes are. Uh, everything's level, so that's I've got that going for me. I got it level. Okay, so now we set our first floor joist. We haven't actually nailed it in yet, but we what we did here was we put we we're just using a, a little test block, putting the test block on there and marking where um, where this should be. So um, that seems to be working. Then we nail this in first, then we put the test block in on the other side, and then we squeeze the other side in and mark that, nail that in, and then we just drop, once we do that on both sides, we can drop the board in, and, and then we just have to nail the sides. So get that done. Next, as far as nails are concerned, I'm using these joist hanger nail, one and a half inch, nine gauge, galvanized. And, uh, that's what they're made for. They're made for, to go through the plate and, and uh, not go through the board and galvanize so they don't rust. All right, so the other thing I did was I started marking where the board's going to go, and then 16 inches on center, if I can get my shadow out of the way. Well, let me go to the other side. So mark at the ends where the board should go, and there's a line every 16 inches on center, and that's where the each joist hanger is going to go, right on that line. And because of the size, when you get to the end, I measure from the back to the front, that's my last 16. Then, then to get to the last corner, it's only what like six to eight inches. But we'll have a double, um, we'll have a double joist there. But and I, I purposely made that the front of the shed where that double joist goes. So a little, little more um, weight load bearing on the front side of it. It's probably where most of the traffic's going to be. So that's how I did that. And uh, so now we're just going to continue putting our rafters in, and I'll show you the final framing. Okay. okay. And that's a wrap. Framing is done. You see we lag bolted in the double tent, two by eight by tens. Everything's joist hangers and everything are hung. And everything is level. So Hopeful that the inspection will go just fine, even though my OCD hates the way it sits on those outside piers. I don't see any reason why those piers would hold, would not be able to hold that structure firmly. But um, it, everything is level, so that's a good thing. Level, level, level. That's the one thing I did right. <laughs> uh, all right, so. 
Hopefully on the next video, I am past the inspection and I'm starting to build the actual flooring and shed. See you then.